The Honorable Mr. Haldor Askramson, thank you again so, so much for having come here to the Institute for Cultural Diplomacy. We really benefited from your lecture before. And we'd like to take the opportunity now just to go a little bit deeper into some of the questions regarding cultural diplomacy, cross-continental cooperation, to get some of your perspectives. And I'd like to begin with the first question, uh, is my favorite question, but maybe also one of the most difficult. What is cultural diplomacy? Or how would you define cultural diplomacy? And then as a second part, what role do you think cultural diplomacy can play in the promotion of cross-continental cooperation? And what importance do you see in today's world for cross-continental cooperation? Well, I'm not, I'm not sure I'm the right person to come with, with a perfect definition, but as I see it, it is using uh, cultural means, uh, all the tools of, 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 of culture, literature, art, and, and whatever, to create more understanding between people, between societies, between regions, learning more about others, and, uh, and getting more respect. And uh, I think uh, respect and learning creates trust, and uh, this, this takes time. Well, I, I don't know everything about every culture in the world, and, and, and sometimes I, I have found myself judging without knowing. And if you are judging other people without really knowing whom you're dealing with, it's very dangerous and can create conflicts. Uh, and uh, I can see it after my experience and as I said, I'm not very used, uh, about, uh, used uh, to talk about cultural diplomacy. But uh, I think I have done some cultural diplomacy without really knowing it. Okay. And how important is the cross-continental cooperation today, uh, as we see the continents not necessarily working so well together, uh, whether it's global crises, Syria, etc. Uh, what do you think, or how do you see the relevance of cross-continental cooperation, and, and do you think cultural diplomacy can assist specifically with that? Well, yes. Uh, we are living in a, in, a, in a very different world from, from what, what the world I was born into. Uh, I was born in a very isolated place in, in in, 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 Iceland, in Iceland, and I couldn't even uh, go to the capital, the capital city of, of, of Iceland because of, of wa 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 waters coming from the glaciers. So this was uh, very isolated. I was living in, 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 in this world. Now it's completely different, very open, and, and uh, I can see the role of, 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 of culture and cultural diplomacy. Dip diplomacy growing all the time and it is quite clear that uh, we could have uh, we could have worked about uh, we have, uh, could have avoided many crises in the world if we would have used what you call cultural di diplomacy and I'm very fond of that you use that that, that, that word we could have cr cr avoided many crises in the world if we are looking to the past. And these crises will continue, I'm sorry to say. So there is a big need. Okay, well, thank you. I think some of the students wanted to continue. Yes, Mr. Haldor, during the lecture we have been discussing about the culture of the northern countries. My question is, what do you think that are the main important cultural issues as far as the northern countries are concerned? Perhaps there might be some important cultural features that you might be proud of, and you could give us perhaps an example? Well, I think we are, in the Nordic countries, we are proud of our societies. We are proud of the equality we, we, we have been able to, to to create. Uh, we are proud of, of, of our welfare systems, actually with heavy taxation. And sometimes it, it is said that, that heavy taxation creates a problem. It is a little bit lower now than some years ago, for example, in, in a country like, like, like Sweden. But I, I would say we are mostly proud of our societies. And it is quite clear that art 
and c culture uh, is the biggest factor in creating these uh, societies. And uh, anyway, uh, as a citizen of the no uh, our Nordic country, I am. I must say I'm proud of our societies. I have three daughters. I don't have a son, and they have all been able to go to university and uh, have a much better education than, than I could have when, when I was a young 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 man. And, and I am very proud of uh, of the opportunities that these young people people have. And I say this not only as a father, I say it as a grandfather, and actually as a, as a grand grandfather. So, so I'm 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 very interested in the future of all these children of mine. So education, it's uh, definitely an important factor. Well, education is is of course a fundamental factor. Uh, if you take country, my country, Iceland. Uh, 100 years ago, or talk about two, uh, 150 years ago, Iceland was actually the poorest country in, in Europe. And uh, the reason for that uh, Iceland could work this out and uh, become a prosperous country, in my view, is the, the main reason is that everybody learned to read and write. For example, when my relatives immigrated to Canada, and I have actually more relatives in Canada than I have in Iceland, uh, about 1890, all these people went with their books. So if you came into a home of these Icelanders in, 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 in Canada, they didn't have much maybe to eat, or not a lot of fancy clothes, but they had books. And, uh, and of course, the old literature has helped people. Uh, I had to read all the sagas when I was a boy. That was something I had to do. And uh, this has been the most important factor, these, only that, to learn to read and write. And this is not the case in many parts of the world, I'm sorry to say. It's true. Thank you very much. Let me ask a related question, but bringing it actually to a number of different levels. What is the importance of cultural diplomacy, first of all, for Scandinavia and the Nordic Council? Secondly, are you satisfied with the relations between the northern countries and the southern countries, let's say Nordic Council and the south, primarily Europe I'm talking about? And thirdly, what are the relations between the Nordic Council and the European Union? Well, <coughs> we think our, our, of ourselves in the Nordic countries that what we have uh, a duty to uh, tell others about our societies, uh, how we have created these rich societies. The, the Nordic countries are, are, are giving a lot of aid through the United Nations. Most of them are uh, about 1% of, 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 of the gross na national product. So, so they are doing a lot through the UN system. So we feel that we have this obligation. We don't think that uh, others should take everything up after us. We, we don't think we are the best in the world. But anyway, we can, we can, uh, we can try to get people to understand how we have been able to build up prosperous so societies. Uh, societies with, with not so many resources. Uh, for example, Denmark doesn't have a lot of resources. Norway has oil, and Sweden has some minerals, but these are mostly knowledge societies which are uh, utilizing knowledge and, of course, mixed with all culture and all that to, to build up prosperous societies, and, and, and we are trying to try to help others to, to do the same. Okay. Well, thank you for, for sharing that. Did you ask? Uh, yeah, my, my question's a bit extensive. It has to do with the, uh, the European Union financial crisis. Uh, it's been a major challenge for the development of the European Union and uh, has brought many members of the European Union 
into serious financial situations uh, with rising unemployment. Um, EU officials have worked tirelessly to try to challenge this, and uh, we're just wondering what your advice would be to them. Um, what, you know, what else can really be done in order to make the European Union economy stronger and tackle the unemployment rate in the short and long term? Well, I, I wish I had the answers, uh, but uh, <coughs> I think the European Union is, is doing a, a good work uh, dealing with these uh, problems. But of course, many of these problems are, are created on a, on a national basis. There was a financial crisis in, in, in Iceland. We can't blame others. We have to tackle that ourselves. And we are, in a way, rather used to that because living with nature up in the north is not <coughs> always easy. It goes up and down. And uh, I think the most important thing that the countries of, of, of uh, the, the southern countries, they have to, 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 to meet these difficulties in one way or another. They, they have to pay their debts, and they have taken too much loans. We did that also in Iceland, but uh, now we are trying to pay them, pay them back. And that means that we, in, in that period when we are paying this up, we, we can't spend as much as we did before. And uh, there are usually simple answers to, to this, and, and, and the main answer is spend less. Um, and in addition to uh, as a senior politician, um, what would your advice be for younger people that are really struggling to find jobs right now? Well, <coughs> I think it's very important that young people have a lot of influence in politics. I am worried about this because young people today do not have much interest in politics. They say, well, oh, it's uh, corrupted and uh, I'm not going into politics. I went into Parliament of Iceland when I was 26 and I have been there in politics now for, for 40 years. I think I, I, I had a lot of <coughs> influence <laughs> and uh, I, I think I had a lot of influence uh, especially uh, for young people and I think it's very important for young people to look to politics to get some answers and, and solve some, some things. But then they have to, to, to take part. And uh, I say get into politics and try to get influence. And then it's important that young people continue to create their own jobs, not waiting forever for, 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 for others. And uh, I have seen uh, people creating, uh, creating, creating jobs. My grandson, he bought his first car when he was 16, and I have been following him. Well, he is washing cars, and uh, sometimes he, when he came to Denmark, he was buying a lot of things. I said, what are you going to do with this? And I said, oh, I'm going to sell it on the internet with, with profit. So in a way, I don't know exactly what he's doing, but he is, cre he is creating something <laughs> and, and, and trying to earn some money. And uh, I think that is very good when young people are creative and they need to be creative. I have one final question. Uh, in, in light of the economic crisis, uh, how would you explain the difference in economic success of the Scandinavian countries uh, and, uh, I guess, in the southern European countries? And how do you think the gap or this gap between them can be closed in the future? I don't think it will be completely closed. We, 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 will, we will never be uh, the same. We are, we are different cultures, we, are, we have uh, different backgrounds, we have different needs. And in the south there is another climate, 
uh, than in the north, and, and, and the, the climate has a lot of influence. Uh, but we can learn from 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 each other, and and I think the the, the, the south can can learn a lot from the north, but we can also learn from the south. Uh, I was traveling earlier this year <laughs> around in Italy, and I must say I came f the first time to Italy 30 years ago as a young man, and I said, I don't want to come here again. I'm not very fond of this country. I, I, but when I came back now and spent two months down in Italy, uh, I, I could see what a, what a terrific country this is with all this culture and all this heritage. And it's, uh, it, uh, I, I have a lot of respect for, for Italy nowadays, so, so what I have learned for, from this, don't judge something you, 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 you know. And so, so they have, of course, a, a very, very uh, good culture, history, and uh, I'm not uh, worried about the future of, 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 of these, uh, these countries. I, I, I think they are on their way up now. But everybody has to learn the hard way. Thank you very much. Sir, as a senior politician, and I assume with your vast experience, what is your message for the future generation of the young leaders, of young leaders? Through this world, which is pretty harsh. Well, I, I, you know, we have challenges in the world. We we didn't face when I started in, 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 in politics. I think it is quite clear that the climate issue and the energy issue is the most important issue we are dealing with today. And it has a lot of effect on our culture. Think of the Philippines today. And, and, and this will continue. And uh, we have to address number one the, the the climate change issue and uh, and I hope that uh, the future world leaders and the young leaders will see this better than the older generation can they see through this because I see a rise in nationalism or right-wing politics well we we see a, a rising nationalism in in, 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 in some some countries, uh, but uh, I hope that uh, the others, than these right-wing nationalists, mm -hmm. will in the end be, be, be stronger. And this is the reason for that we have to have more young people into politics. Because if they don't go into politics, I am afraid that, that they, these right-wing politicians, will have much more influence than they should have. That is what has happened. For example, here in Germany, when, when, when Hitler came to power, it was, I think, because the other, the majority, didn't, didn't participate. And uh, this is something that can be very dangerous because all the main decisions are taken in politics. And what is politics? It's about life. Yes. If you're not interested in politics, you're not interested in life. And uh, so if you want to have an influence on the life of yourself or the life of others, a lot of it goes through politics. Thank you very much for your time. It was really a pleasure to have you here once again in the ICD, and uh, we really are, are grateful for your, your expertise as well as your reflections. So thank you very much for the Thank interview. you. It was a great pleasure.